Hello, hello, hello. All righty, everybody. Hello, it's Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com, and today we're going to talk about HA proxy. So, uh, you may have used Nginx as a proxy manager or something like that, but I have news for you. There's something out there that you may want to consider, especially if you're wanting to do more than just uh, load balance or proxy websites. And that is HA proxy. So let me just show you that. Let me flip you over here. Um, let's take a look. Here you go. All right. Actually, what, let's put, uh, let's do this. That way I'm still in the picture. So HA proxy. That's what I'm talking about. This is an interesting product. I've used it before. It's great to be used on a different project. So what is it? Well, let's just take a look at this graphic right here. Let me just zoom right in on this guy. All right, so you can see this. So HA proxy is a load balancer and a proxy. So basically what you have here is if you see, uh, you have the cloud coming in here, your firewall, and then you have HA proxy, which, you know, is a piece of software. And then you can come in here and, at, and you have your websites. So if you have like three websites or, or two web servers and you want to load balance between those two, you can, HA proxy can, can do that in different techniques, round robin, um, failover, all that good stuff. But, and so most of the time I see out there people using Nginx proxy for, or Nginx as a proxy for this. And Nginx is awesome, but HA proxy has some more features that you don't get in like the free version of Nginx. So TCP, load balancing. So you can take uh, all kinds of things. So um, for example, you can do your HTTP traffic. You can do remote desktop gateway. So it can be an RDP gateway load balancer. It can be an SMTP load balancer. And really, it can basically do a proxy for any TCP connection and set up. So that is pretty darn awesome. So you can look down here. Um, you can see some of these different items here. It's HTTP2 capable. Um, so, But let's just go over here to the main features. Yeah, so here we go. Um, native SSL, ACL, so like for example, if you're wanting to go send your traffic www.yourdomain, you can send that to one one web server or you can say um, bob.yourdomain and send that to a different one. And, and so you can set that up as L ACLs to do that. So, and one of the things I've used this for is RDP protocol. And so it's good to, uh, um, you can put it in front of your RDP server, and if you you want to load balance there, or some, or if you want it to be the gateway, and you can set it up that way. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've seen it used for SMTP, and like you could use any other kind of TCP sockets. So I'm trying to look through here to see some of these things. Oh, you know, it installs on Linux, Solaris, BSD. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty awesome. Um, one of the things, so I'm a big fan of PFSense. And uh, my camera's here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, just my camera there just a little bit. So um, it you know that I'm a PFSense fan, so HA proxy is something that can be used in, in PFSense. So let's just go ahead and you know look at some some of these things. So one of the things that's pretty cool is so let's go look at this live demo here. Now so this is the live demo that's that's set up by HA proxy and this is their stats page which is pretty neat that you can look at. So you've got Front ends and and back ends on these. So if you look at here, here's a www front end and back end. And so it, you can see the different 
different distributions of, of how they're hitting things. They got like a Git and a www and then a demo. And, and so that's, it shows you how this things, and, and you got this, this nice little color chart to show you how things are, are going. And so this is just pretty neat. It's built right into it. You basically go into config and you, you change a couple things to set up on there. It's pretty, pretty darn awesome. Um, so their documentation is not too bad. You go check this out. Um, let me see if I can search. Um, <laughs> so here's the documentation. Starter guide, configuration manual, and all these things. I thought there was a search in here, but I don't see it. Um, so let's look at load balancing. So here's the documentation. It's, it's kind of old school. Really, if you want to know what to do, it, a quick Google will, will, will find it for you. So HA proxy. Um, and we'll just say SM. TP. And so there. Let's do RDP. That's a good one here. RDP. So here you get to the actual HA proxy blog post about RDP. So here's how you do it. Um, and so the config file looks like this, where you have a front end and a back end. So on the front end side, you define it and you give it a little name. And then you set the mode and then you give it some IP addresses that, that you want to bind to. And then you have basically some um, different configuration flags here. Uh, and some of them are like, you'll see this RDP cookie. Uh, and, and so that'll be in the documentation. So this is the front end portion of it. And then as part of that front end configuration, you get what the default back end. And, and that's this here. And so when you go down to back end, you see here's the RDP. Again, TCP, uh, balancing, lease connection. So there's several different options you can have from a balancing standpoint, round robin. Um, I'm not sure what happened here with my stream. Okay. So... Here, back in it to it. I don't know. I thought something happened in my stream. I've not been doing a live stream in a long time. So, oh, look, you know, I kind of got that right in my face. I wonder if that's... Anyway, so um, balancing, like I said, least connection. And basically, that's like the, the, the that setup uh, tells you, you know, that it will go to the one that doesn't have the, that's the least busy. Uh, there's a round robin one. And a bunch of different configurations you can look at it then. again. This RDP cookie again that's in there. You got timeouts and stuff like that. And then what you just find here is you got like these two servers here to define. So like this is server one and this is server two. 3389 is the RDP port by default. Um, and so it'll just balance between those two, two servers that you RDP in based on what you come in. And one of the cool things is like you can set this where it says you, you're binding to the RDP port at 3389. So imagine that you don't want that to be 3389 on the outside. So you could change that to 3390 here and then change it to 3389 here. And it will just move those. It'll, it'll put that port to it. So if you want to. If you don't want to change your server to listen on a different port, you can actually do it through the proxy. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. All right. So anyway, um, that's this is just an article. I didn't even read it, but it's one of their 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 articles. This is a 2015. So it's been around for a long time doing this sort of stuff. Um, without a connection broker, um, with some RDP stuff. So I, like I said, I haven't really didn't really look at this article, but 
if you go to their their blogs, they have quite a few articles about how to do stuff uh, on there. You, you can go through here and, and look at this stuff. So I'll, I'll give you another example. Let's just look for SMTP. So you can see if SMTP server with uh, HA proxy. Um, so yeah, let's just look at this first one right here that pops up. So uh, using Postfix is using it as a as a load balancer with Postfix. It, this article talks about all this, and again, you'll see here like here's a little diagram of how. So you get the internet, you got port 25, which your SMTP port. You got the HA proxy in there, and then it proxies to these two different um, SMTP servers. So moving on, you look down here, and here's the the little, the HA proxy config. And so again, we have the front SMTP server, the front end, and it's binding on port 25, all IP addresses, and then the default backend is this backend postfix. Again, uh, port 25, you want it in TCP mode. Um, and so you'll see here it is doing the postfix SMTP right through there. Now, here's, here's some information on how to actually configure postfix to do that. Um, so it's pretty, pretty, pretty darn neat. Um, let me just switch it to HTT. Um, the, probably finding the basic configuration is probably what I should do. So if I go back over here to the top of this guy, there's probably some quick start guides or something here. And I'll just, heck, we'll just search. HA proxy quick start. By the way, uh, just for, for the record, you know, DigitalOcean is a great place to, for resources to articles. I've set up HA proxy on a Raspberry Pi. So it works awesome on a Raspberry Pi. You can use a Raspberry Pi to load balance and it really doesn't take that much power. The Raspberry Pi has plenty of horsepower to do, you know, basic testing. So I had at one point in time created uh, a little cluster of pro uh, Raspberry Pi. So we got the first one had an HA proxy on it, then it had a web server on two, two of them, and then it had a MySQL server on another one. And so I was just round robin switching between those web servers. It's pretty neat. Um, here is a CentOS 8 HA proxy configuration, how to install it, all this good stuff. And so what I wanted to do is scroll on down here to the actual HA. Well, it doesn't seem to That's maybe not the greatest article. Uh, getting started. Installing, pretty easy. So you can look at that. Um, so again, here's an article on how to install it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, you, know, it, it, you can do it in Docker or Linux, all that good stuff. So um, yeah, so HA proxy. Let's just, uh, let me flip this. Woo -doo. All right, boom. So that was kind of like the just a 500 feet level of HA proxy. Uh, just wanted to put it out there. If you're looking for a load balancer or something like that, that you want a little bit more flexible, a little bit more features than Nginx can do. And now, don't get me wrong, Nginx is the right job, can be the right product for the right job. Uh, but HA Proxy does have some features that I believe the Nginx doesn't have. And so I recommend that you take a look at that if you're looking for something as an alternative. So there it is. I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com. If you got something out of this, go ahead and smash that like button. Uh, we'd love you to subscribe to my YouTube 